Right, basically, we're going to talk about equivalent fractions, and that's where you take a fraction. Suppose we actually had, we divide something into halves, and we're considering a half of something. If we divide that again into quarters, we can see from that that a half is the same as two quarters. They are what's called equivalent fractions because they're the same. All right. They represent the same amount of the whole. But we don't want to have to keep drawing diagrams every time we look at equivalent fractions. So what you need to have is a way of working with equivalent fractions that means you don't have to draw the diagrams. So if we look at our half, and I want to change that into quarters, or anything else I like, but in this case I want to change it to quarters. There's only one rule with equivalent fractions. Whatever you do to the numerator, the bit on the top, you must do to the denominator. If you do the same thing to both the numerator and the denominator, the fraction stays the same. So in this case, we ask ourselves, to get from 2 to 4, what have I had to multiply by? It's always multiply, not adding. And obviously I've had to multiply by 2. If I multiply the bottom by 2, I have to multiply the top by 2. So quite simply, that's 2 quarters. All right, so if we were to ask what is 3 fifths to tenths, once again we ask ourselves, what have I done to the 5 to get to 10? Obviously I've multiplied by 2, so I have to do the same to the numerator. So that's 6 tenths. I think there's a question in the textbook and then it says, well, 3 fifths is the same as how many fifteenths? In fact, I think it actually puts it like this afterwards. And that's quite confusing because if you use the same logic, working from left to right, what have I done to 10 to get to 15? Well, I've multiplied by 1 and a half. That doesn't work. Always go back to the beginning fraction, the first fraction you started with. So 3 fifths is how many fifteenths? I've multiplied the 5 by 3. I have to do the same to the top. So that's 9 fifteenths. Or... We could say that 3 fifths is, I don't know, how many 20 fifths? What have I multiplied by? I've multiplied by 5, and I've multiplied by 5 on the top, so it's 15 20 fifths. They're all the same fractions, so we can say that 3 fifths is the same as 6 tenths, which is also the same as 9 fifteenths, which is also the same as 15 20 fifths. And there's an infinite number of equivalent fractions. And the reason this is important is that when we're adding fractions, they must have the same denominator. So you make an equivalent fraction that means they've all got the same denominator. All right. um, I guess the, the only other thing with equivalent fractions is, is to make sure that um, if you are simplifying, it's actually going the other way. So from 16 twentieths, to get the simplest form of this, we're going down to what the base would be before we multiply by anything. So we're looking for the biggest number that goes into both those. And Brittany is correct. If we divide by 4, the, divide by 4, divide by 4, we end up with 4 over 5. So that's an equivalent fraction to 4 over 5. The reason we say 4 fifths is the simplest form is that it can't go any lower. They're the smallest numbers on which it's based. All right, and the reason why this is important is when we compare fractions, and we'll look.